Rolando Estacado. My name is Rolando and for today's episode I'm going to be covering Bowie Knife Combatives and Filipino Martial Arts. I get asked this a lot as a practitioner and also as an instructor about the comparisons between Filipino Martial Arts and Bowie Knife Combatives. Not sure why the two are always being compared. It's almost similar uh, in the line of questioning that I receive as far as Filipino martial arts and Japanese martial arts. I can kind of see the logic in terms of comparing Japanese swordsmanship versus Filipino uh, swordsmanship. I can kind of see the comparison or the need for inquiry around Japanese swordsmanship and Filipino swordsmanship. As you can see in my own collection over here, as you can see I'm avid collector of Japanese swords, replicas, and also Filipino swords. So I am a student of both but I can see the line of questioning because at one point in the 20th century there was a very massive clash, military clash, between the Japanese and the Filipinos. So a comparison is natural. The Bowie Knife and the Filipino martial arts I find a little bit curious because I don't necessarily see the connection between the two. I will say that a lot of Filipino martial artists really like the Bowie Knife and I know that a lot of Bowie Knife Combatives practitioners are also very respectful and may even have a background in Filipino martial arts. So what I hope to achieve with this video is to draw a comparison, possibly address some of the questions and share with you some of my own observations as to what the compare and contrast is. It's not a video about which one is superior because there is no such thing as a superior martial art. So without further ado, I hope you find this episode informative and enjoyable. The reputations of legendary fighting men is attached to both system. Colonel James Bowie, who famously fought at the Vidalia Sandbar fight, started out as a duel, devolved into a gang fight wherein he was injured, shot, stabbed, but ultimately survived. The Filipino martial arts has been used to fight off invading Spaniards, Japanese, and American forces. The one icon that stands out for everybody is none other than Antonio Tatang Illustrissimo, who at 16 years old was challenged by a grown man to a sword fight. He proceeded to fight the man and then ultimately behead the man at the tender age of 16 years old. So let's take a look at this Bowie back cut, very famously used in the Bowie knife combatants. This takes advantage of the unique feature of the false edge of the Bowie. If we take a look at this over here, the false edge actually acts like a karambit, so it's very important that we lead with it because it increases the pounds per square inch every time it is used. On top of that, it is a hip-generated core-centric movement, so that combination of core-centric movements plus the Bowie back cut leading edge is what makes it absolutely powerful. The third important component is that it is a fencing methodology so that only one side is constantly used at all times. For the Filipino martial arts, this is a trailing edge methodology, meaning it trails behind the fist. Part of the reason for that is that when you lead with your hand, it allows the practitioner to be far more deceptive, a different kind of deceptiveness. For example, we can go ahead and take a look at the Dug Dug Bawas movement, which makes it an arm-centric movement. So when we do Dug Dug Bawas, you can change your grip changing your distances and creating a deception within that system. It's something that we cannot do with the Bowie knife. Additionally, when we're doing the Dug Dug Bawas, we can also use the stick as a way to cover our entire bodies. In addition to it, we can also move around and create more deception by now handing it off to the left side. This is very unique to the Filipino martial arts and it was created by Antonio Illustrissimo's colleague, Felicissimo Dizon, my father's instructor. So being able to fight with both right and left hand is a very unique feature of the Filipino martial arts. It is something that cannot be seen in the Bowie Knife Combatives, but I believe with Bowie Knife Combatives, with an absolutely superior tool, it is not necessary to be used. Those are the three key features that I have seen in comparing the Filipino martial arts and the Bowie Knife Combatives. In all of my training and experience, there really only is one tool that combines both. The Native American Tomahawk. 